Hi friends, welcome to Code Jana, and in this video we will begin setting up the Flask application and VS Code as well. So let's just get started. I'm assuming that you want to start from scratch as well so, so that you can see every installation process. We are going to open our Chrome window and search for python.org. We are just going to open the website and install Python fresh. So currently the latest version is Python 3.8.5 for Windows and we are just going to quickly go through this list and we are going to install this windows executable file that's x86 for 32-bit and it also includes the 64-bit as well if you just want the 32-bit version then you can install this x86 only i'm going to do this one and it's only 26 mb so it's going to be done in a while all right so as you can see it is done now let's open show in folder and it will be downloaded in your downloads folder so let's click on it and now remember that you need to add python 3.8 to path so that we can access python from command shell as well now just click install now it comes with itle and pip installation so that we can install other libraries with the help of pip install command now while this is happening we are going to install and download vs code as well so type vs code click on download visual studio code all right so now we are going to click the user installer of 64 bit again you can install the 32 bit but for systems with 4 gb and plus ram you should install the 64 bit version and as you can see it has grabbed the vs code setup so it's happening right now Let's take a look at our Python setup process and it's just going to be installed in few minutes. All right, so it's setup was successful and while VS code is happening, we are just going to check if we have Python in our system or not. So let's open command prompt. Then you can simply type Python double dash version. All right, so we do have Python 3.8.5 now. You can also access Python shell from this. Type Python and then enter. So this is Python shell and you can do some simple calculations here. You can also make programs here, but uh, we actually need a complete IDLE or even code editor to make our programs. So let's print our hello universe program. Just print hello universe. So as you can see, it has printed hello universe. So our Python setup is complete. You can exit out of it. And as you can see, it doesn't take simple exit. You need to type exit and then parenthesis. All right, now you can exit the command prompt. I also want to show you what happens when it is added to path. So let's click on windows button, then environment variables. Then click on environment variables. And here in user variables for your particular username click on path you can either double click it like so or you can click on it and hit edit here so this is what Python did it has added these two folders in your environment variable if for some reason you don't see it here you need to add this particular path of Python scripts from your Windows Explorer the easiest way to do is like this by following this video you can click on C and then users and then your username in our case it is code Jana after that you need to go to app data and as you can see we do not see app data here for that you need to open the view and then click on hidden items now you will see app data as a hidden folder click on it and then hit local after that you can hit program then python then python 38 then you can copy this entire path by clicking here see it's already selected it's the same format with your username so you can just copy it and if you don't see both of these locations in your environment variable then you can click new and then paste it to path after that you can hit ok you will see that it has also been added I'm going to delete it because we don't need it twice to be added after that you need to click on scripts 
and then copy this path as well. Click on new and then paste this path. Hit OK. And now we are going to see it again. So it will look something like this. Python 38 has also been added along with scripts. So I'm just going to delete this from my environment variable because it's already added here. All right. So that will make Python work seamlessly with command prompt. This setup is also in our downloads folder. So let's click on it. Here it is. Double click on it. All right, it's open. Now let's accept the agreement. You don't need to change this path. Click next and then next again. Now here you need to add VS code to your path as well because VS code supports a terminal and Python shell. If you don't add it to path then pip installation and even Python shell is not going to work inside of VS code. So we are going to keep it checked. You can also click on register code as an editor. VS code is called as code. So just click on it because we want all Python files and coding files associated with VS code. If you don't want that, if you want PyCharm or any other IDLE to be associated with the programming files, you can leave it unchecked. Also, if you want your files to be open from open with code action, like uh, when we right click on any file and these all of these options open like we can compress and other things it will also add open with code so if you want that you can keep this checked i'm not going to do that hit next and install all right so both of our setups are done and we have installed them as well so let's launch visual code because we need to check if python is working from inside vs code or not as the tradition says, we are going to create our Hello Universe app. Click on new file and now it's showing you select editor for untitled one. See there are two ways to create a new file. You can either click on this new file and it will prompt you as a text editor or see at the left hand corner you can click on this explorer button and you can open a folder in it. It makes it way easier to create new files. So let's click open folder. And we are going to create a folder on our desktop. Let's name it code jana underscore flask. So let's open this folder. Now we are going to work inside this folder and we are going to keep every file in this folder. So as you can see now we have these options with us. This one is for creating new file and it makes it very easier to create new files inside this folder. So let's click on it. And now it's not going to ask us which code editor. It's just going to open the file with VS Code. So let's name it myapp.py. All right. And as I type myapp.py, it's going to recognize that it's a Python file. So at the right corner, you can see Python extension is recommended for this file type. All right, so while we are at this extension, let's download other extensions as well. It's not going to take a while and these extensions will help you a lot in making this Flask app. So let's get to that one by one. I'm just going to close it because we are going to install extensions from here. Click on this extensions button. Now, first of all, we are going to need this Python and it's already highlighted. Let's click on it and click install. All right, so as you can see, it's installed. Now at the right corner, you can also see that it has detected that now after installing Python and uh, it has already selected the Python 3.8 package. It's saying that linter pylint is not installed. So pylint is used to detect errors in your code and it's very essential for us. So let's click install from here because it's not going to search pylint from your VS Code extensions. You need to install it via pip install. So it's currently happening. All right, it's done. So after this, we need to use some Flask related extensions. First one is Flask snippets. We are going to install this C strap one. Click install. And uh, personally, I'm not going to use this snippet in this particular series because I want to show you how to create these codes from scratch. However, if you want to create multiple Flask related projects, then you are going to need 
a really quick building of these codes. So Flask snippets is going to help you a lot in that. Now, as you already know that Flask uses Jinja template. So we are going to use this Jinja 2 snippet kit. It's going to help you create HTML codes much faster with this snippet. Now this one we are going to use together because these codes are quite simple and there is not a lot of confusion on how you create them. So I'm going to use Jinja 2 snippets a lot. Let's click install. It's done in few seconds. After this, we need Git lens. I hope you already know that Git is a versioning tool to track your changes in the code. We are going to use Git when we deploy our application. You can deploy it on any personal server. I'm going to show you how to deploy your app for free on Heroku and for a very little fee on Linode. And after that, again, free on Amazon AWS server and then on Google Cloud. So we are going to cover all the basics of app deployment because definitely at some point you're going to need either of these options. So you must know all of them. We are going to use Git to push our changes and pull our changes in the code. So after this, we are going to need trailing spaces. See trailing spaces extension removes any unnecessary spaces from your code. It helps a lot because as you already know that Python takes indentation very seriously. Indentation allows Python to understand which code belongs to which block. You will understand when we create the code. So let's install this one as well. So it's done. All right, so now everything is done. And finally, after all of this setup, we are going to install a final extension that is going to help you throughout your journey of programming. And that is Kite plugin. All right, so let's install Kite as well. This one, Kite autocomplete for Python. Let's click on it and hit install. Currently, I have installed Kite only for VS Code. All right, so after installing all of these softwares and extensions, let's begin creating our environment to create this application. To work with Flask, you need Flask library and you need to install it with pip install Flask. So before doing that, I'm going to create Flask in a virtual environment so that we can keep our library separate. Let's open our terminal from control backtick. That's the key before your number one. All right, so let's clear our terminal with CLS. Now in code jana underscore flask, we need to create a virtual environment. So we can do this by simply virtual env and then type the name of the environment. Venv. It can be anything actually. We're just going to type venv. Now it's saying that virtual env is not recognized as the name of the command line. See when you learn programming, you are going to come across all of these errors and you need to learn how you can search for these errors and then fix them. Right now, we are going to check if we have virtual env installed in our system or not. So let's do virtual env and version. Again, it has not recognized virtual env as a command. So let's type pip install virtual env. All right, so now it's collecting virtual env package and now it's done. So how about we check it now? virtual env and version. See, so now we have it. If I didn't show you that error, then you might have come across it by yourself. So this is how you fix it. You need to check if you have virtual env in your system or not. Now let's type virtual env and then venv. Again, it can be anything. Let's just wait a while. It's going to copy all the libraries that we require in this venv folder. All right, so as you can see, we now have this venv folder in code Jana Flask. Let's click on it and see, we have this scripts folder in our venv folder. Click on it and you will see this python.exe in this folder. So now we have an environment separate from our global setup of Python. So if for some reason you need to switch machines or you need to show your code or you need to transfer this code, you can click on desktop or wherever you have created this particular code John underscore flask folder and you can just copy it or cut it and transfer it to wherever you like and every dependency will be transferred along with this folder. All right, so what do we need now? As you can see on the right panel, there are the list of dependencies that you need right now. So we'll start with installing them one by one. 
let's install the flask dependency pip install and then flask all right so it's done and i'm not going to install all the dependencies right now we are going to install them as and when we need all right so now let's check whether we can create a really simple flask app or not all right so let's begin creating our really simple flask app and after that we'll keep on adding new functionality and create that wonderful flask app that you saw in the introduction video so we'll start with importing the flask class from flask library so from flask import flask class all right now our next step is to assign a variable to it by convention we are going to use app because that's what the server recognizes so let's create an instance of the flask class like so now we are going to pass a parameter as well which is going to be the name of this particular file that is my app so how do we do that we don't type my app.py we are going to type a magic method which is going to be double underscore name and double underscore so as you can see it has highlighted it in blue now let's create a decorator function and we are going to assign a simple route of our home page a decorator function starts with at so let's create a decorator function of app variable let's type app and then let's access its method and now we are going to write the route method because we want to create a home route so let's type route here and you don't need to type anything for now let's just type slash for home route in inverted commas now double or single it's up to you i'm just going to do a single inverted comma now you cannot leave a decorator function alone you need to define a function here so let's define a home function again you can name it anything but when you are creating an application it's best if your function name is as descriptive and as direct as possible since this particular route is going to point towards our home page home function makes much more sense you can also make it home page to make it more direct all right so let's just create a home page function and you don't need to provide any argument there how about we return a message because this is the simplest of flask message that you can return let's just type hello universe all right so now our decorator function is ready we have created a route as well now we need to run this particular app there are two ways to do it you can either run it from terminal or you can run it from vs code which will eventually open in your default browser i prefer the browser method so let's create a little conditional statement that will start the server and then we can view our home page so let's create the conditional if name which is the name of our file all right is equal to main which is saying that this file myapp.py is the one that we want to run if we run this file what should happen well we want this app variable and then access the function then we want to use the run method and in this run method we can specify some arguments as you can see kite has already told us that we can assign a host a port some debug option and other options as well for now we are not going to complicate it further we are going to type debug and then make it true because we want to see any errors if they happen in our code and we also want to restart the server when we make changes so that we can see those changes now everything is done so how about we run this program all right so it has successfully run our program now all right so sometimes what happens is it doesn't recognize this flask i have installed flask globally so we did not encounter any issue I'm going to just close this server and show you how we can install the same in our virtual environment. Let's close this server and clear our terminal. And now, as you remember that we had created this VNV folder, we also transferred all of these files in our virtual environment. All right, so now let's activate our virtual environment by VNV slash scripts and then activate. Alright, so as you can see, we have received another error. It's saying that running scripts is currently disabled on this system. Alright, don't worry about that. It's very easy fix. Now you can either fix it for just one file, but since we are going to use it for a lot of files and we cannot fix it every single time it breaks, 
so we are going to globally set to allow scripts to run on this system don't worry it's not an insecure practice you just need to be attentive as to what scripts are currently running in your system so the fix is really easy you just need to open your powershell not command prompt so let's click on it click search for powershell and now right click it to open it as an administrator all right after this you need to add this command in your powershell all right that's set execution policy and then remote signed press enter all right so now it's going to ask you whether you want to make the change or not well we do want to make the change and since we are doing it only for just one statement you can select just yes and not yes to all all right now exit it now we are going to try activating our environment again I press the up arrow to access the last command and see this little VENV has popped up on the left of our screen so our environment is active all right so let's check whether we have flask in our system or not in this virtual environment for that you need to type pip show and then name of the library so package not found flask because we have not installed it in this virtual environment it's very easy and very quick let's type pip install flask and it's done so from now on please pay attention towards this venv on the left corner if for some reason let's deactivate the environment if for some reason you don't see it that means you are not working inside your virtual environment and from now on we are going to install each library in that environment so please do pay attention because your code might fail if you have installed something globally and not in this virtual environment and you try to run it so let's activate our environment once again let's type venv which is the folder name then slash and a scripts folder which i showed you earlier as well then slash activate press enter now we are working in the virtual environment so now let's try to run this file by ourselves let's type python and then type the file name that's myapp.py so as you can see the server has started like before only this time we are working in the virtual environment of code jana underscore flask so let's try to open this particular link in our default browser you can control and then click on this url and you can clearly see i'm going to make this a little bit larger you can see that hello universe has successfully printed how about we change this message hello universe to all my coding buddies all right now we're just going to save this file see as soon as we made the change and we saved the file it has restarted the server let's open the server again and see hello universe to all my coding buddies all right so now relax for this video because we have successfully installed all the extensions and softwares and we have also created a really simple flask app so that's it for this video in the next one we will discuss the layout and structure of our website so i'll see you in the next one and please if you like this video please give it a thumbs up like and share it to your other coding buddies thank you for watching take care happy coding